Hey everyone, my name is Megan and welcome back to What's Your Why. Thank you all so much for clicking onto this video. This episode is one I enjoyed recording so much. This chat was one I had with Liam, who is one of the most interesting people I think I've ever talked to. Just his passions in life and where he's come from and how he holds conversations. Like it's all just so interesting. It captured a part of me that I didn't want the conversation to end. So yeah, I hope you all enjoy listening to this as much as I enjoyed recording it. So I'm, uh, I'm 56 years on this planet, 56 years as a flesh and blood human being. And I, was, I, came, I came into the world uh, not far from here in Mount Carmel Hospital. It took me and my mom two days to get the job done. Grew up not far from here too, I'd say about, about an hour's walk from here, Klonski, by the Dodder River. Uh, I, got, I was raised speaking Irish. My dad gave me Irish without telling me it was a language. He just gave it to me as something that we did together. It was first just me and him and mom. And then it was school. So it was, oh, there's more people doing this, these sounds. And then we went down to West Kerry to the Gaeltoch there where it is the first language. And you go, oh, and then you start seeing the land and you see the, you see the Farmarov, which is the dead man, an island, looks like a dead man out on the water. And you see these rocks and you start seeing everything like a living thing. And, and it somehow connects with the language and the songs and the music that go with the language and the people and the land. So that was a big formative part of me. I think it's all in there. Uh, everything else is just adding you know, adding masks and shapes and surfaces to what I, am, what I am, essentially. And so I kind of got into being a rock and roll, uh, rock god kind of person. Yeah, I got into that idea of, 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 of rock and roll. Punk rock happened when I was 14, 15, and that was a movement that was like, kids from all over Dublin were making their own clothes and kind of doing their own hair and creating themselves. And yes, there were kind of role models like, you know, the Sex Pistols and the Stranglers and the Clash and different people who kind of presented themselves in a certain way that we kind of maybe copied. But it was also about just your own thing, doing your own thing and stealing your dad's clothes, your mom's clothes even more, and just creating a look that was, that was stylish, but also kind of disturbing. I think being disturbing was important, it was like, you know, disturb, this, this world needs to be disturbed at that stage. I was always into trad music, so traditional music was my foundation, and I sang all those songs, not all those songs, but I have a handful of songs that I sing that we would call Shanno songs, which are ancient songs, and that give me a sense of, I have something to show people if I want to express an atmosphere of where I come from. And I really think that those old songs contain that atmosphere and contain that sense of pain and that sense of joy that we have as people. And that relates to this land and to the, to the islands and the hills and the rivers here and to the history that we've experienced, good and bad, and, uh, and back. I think some of those tones, like we're human beings, that every single family every single person that you encounter, they go back to the beginning of time, as we know it. And that's mind-boggling. And for anyone to have a very definite idea of what that exactly is, is foolish. Because how are we to know? All we can go is by feeling, and by art, I think, by artistic creation, creativity, and things like the movement, movements social movements, punk movements, fashion movements, all kinds of movements of people that comes kind of from the heart, I think always kind of reconnect us with, with our essence as living things. Your thinking head turns off when you're playing music. So you really do get a chance to see, oh my God, this is amazing. Life, every single beat of your heart, every breath that you will take from here until the end of your life, is a chance 
a chance to know yourself and a chance to know life. When you speak about music, I can see that you light up in a certain way. Mm. I'd love to get an insight into the journey you've been on. Music was always in our house, so, and again, it came with the language, so it came at the same time. Dad gave me songs. So I never thought, it, this is music. I just, it was just something that we did. And again, that had its own un unfolding school. Oh, there's other music, there's other, this is something else. And as a kid, I used to, uh, I used to sing the pop songs, you know, and the adults, the grown-ups used to think this was really funny. So I was into pop and I had a feeling about it. At a young age, I think I had a real feeling that I'll be doing this. That's what I've, I ended up doing. And I, there was a part of me that always knew that I would be doing this. And um, there was another part of me that didn't know what I was going to be doing at all. I was kind of afraid that I just, you know, I just fail. There was that whole failure idea. And, but the, the, the music got its way. I met a, a piper from um, Uist, one of the islands off the west of Scotland. And she said she was too lazy not to play the pipes. I thought that was such a good, you know, that the force was too strong of piping that it would take more effort for her not to play them. I just thought, absolutely. What was it that made you keep fighting for music? Ah, uh, it was, it, it didn't take much, you know. It was just like, ah, oh, for God's sake, this is, there's no, this is what I'm, this is, I'm good, I'm good at this. And when I tap into it, you know, there's so much of it comes, like, there's too much there to just keep you mesmerised and to keep you attracted on that road. And it was really like when I told my dad, Dad, this is what I'm doing, I'm sorry, I'm going to let you down on the third level education thing, but I, I can do this. And I literally could see a road with lights on either side, you know, I just, that's, I visualise that in my head. I said, I just see this road, I see it, I see it, it's full of amazing things and and it's my road and uh, I guess it's music but I maybe I was seeing a road that involves so much more it does as, as a human being everybody's life involves so much more than what they do and that's good to remember that too that by living you are a walking miracle really you know by being alive and by breathing and walking and feeling and all of those things. So when in doubt, just look at the palm of your hand and see the intricacy of what's going on underneath that skin and what's going on on that skin and what it means to touch. Not everyone can appreciate just how much of a miracle they are. Mm, yeah. Where does that come from in you? I'm, I, I might have had to fight for it for myself. Uh, he, yeah, there was there were times I wasn't being told I was great, you know, and. Uh, so I had to nourish my own sense of what I am, you know, I had to nourish my own love of myself and a huge natural belief in that because I, you've got to thank, be thankful for yourself, to yourself, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's easy to say on a comfortable chair, looking out on a beautiful place in good, beautiful company, but but I think it's, it starts, love starts here. It starts here. Your way of relating to life starts within yourself. It's that kind of thing. Um, last year, I might have said, making music is the most important thing in my life. And it still moves me to a beautiful, strong feeling, you know, just charges my body and myself. But, this thing happened and a whole load of the music that was planned for for these months were cancelled and i was thinking to myself what am i going to how am i going to am i going to crack am i going to break is this going to break me then i got word that this man his name is arvo looking horse and i he i got word that he had lit a fire and i thought oh that's a good idea yeah light a fire this is the time to sit on the earth. Yeah, this is the time to just go, oh my God, wake up. This is the time to wake up. And I kind of got, I got into the back garden for a while and then I just said, I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna walk at dawn. And I'm gonna walk at sunset maybe too. For me, every time I cross the threshold of my front door 
And you know, during the spring summer, it was like four in the morning sometimes. I'd wake up, I'd see a little bit of light in the sky, I'd go, come on. And as soon as I'm up like that, I always feel better. I always feel I'm up now. Mm -hmm. And then out through that door and suddenly the sky is a billion miles over my head and the birds are singing and there's a light is creeping into the day and I'm seeing it and I can see that tomorrow. I can see it for the rest of my life. I got into that and that became the most important thing. To me, everything else is equally important. What do you want to be remembered for? I don't want to be necessarily, I don't mind if I'm remembered or not. It's the feeling that I leave behind. What feeling is that? It's, it's that feeling that I get when I play and sing music that I've been talking about, mm -hmm. you know? Just a connectedness, an infinity, a feeling maybe beyond life, beyond death, beyond all of those things. Just a feeling beyond thinking. And so, yeah, so I think, and I think that's what music has done through the centuries, through the millennia, is left a feeling. And a lot of the greatest music, we don't know who did it. So carrying a feeling, carrying a good feeling. Yeah, that's what, you know, that's what my, my contribution to life. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Liam, I could literally listen to you speaking all day, but one last question. Okay. It's up to your own interpretation. What's your why? My why? Ah. Well, that's interesting you should ask me that. I, my friend Peter said, have you got any bits of music that you might send me and I might make something out of it? And I started playing, and I had, no, I had nothing in mind, so I was just playing something on the guitar, just circular, kind of. Why, 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 why? And I don't know what I, what, why I was singing, but that's what came, was just why. I don't know what my why is. I really don't. Why? Why, to me, the idea of why um, is a beautiful word, why. But I, why sometimes can be related to worry. I, 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 think I'll put, I think I'll work on that song, but it won't be full of questions. Mm -hmm. It'll just have the word why in there. Um, why do you think it holds so much power? The word. Mm -hmm. Ah, it's a good question. I mean, a child, isn't it, isn't it one of the first or second words that a child learns to use? Why? 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 And you can just keep going. And they do. The little ones, they just keep going with it. I think it's a word that needs a break. It should be used, but without all of these tragic things around it, you know. Why? Almost, it should have no question mark anymore, maybe. You know, <laughs> it, work, could, it could work in a different way. It could lift us up. Why?